Hi everyone, so tonight I am making cheese fondue and um, I thought it would be fun just to kind of show you how I make cheese fondue. Now I am 100% authentic Swiss, this is my Swiss passport, and I wanted to kind of just show you how my family has been making fondue for years, it's kind of like family recipe. So this is obviously a very, very authentic recipe. So I will show you everything um, from start to finish, so let's get started. So obviously one of the most important things that you're going to need when you're making fondue is a fondue dish. So in Switzerland this is called a um, gaclon, this is called the gaclon, and basically it's just a big pot where the cheese is going to be melted. And I know you can buy electric sets nowadays, but I think here a lot of it is still kind of the traditional one. So it's just like a little thing to place it on. And then you have one of these inserts where there's basically um, a paste inside. So you can buy this here. It's a flammable paste that just burns very steadily without being like dangerous or anything. And then you put this paste, so I'm gonna open it up later, but you put it in here and then you light it. So once it's lit, you would put this in here, and then you can regulate the heat with these little holes in here, as you can see, so you can open it and close it. And also with the set, you want to get some forks. I mean, you could use regular forks, but the fondue forks are longer so that you can stir really well without you know, getting cheese all over your hands. And the next most important thing is obviously the cheese. Now here in Switzerland, you can go into any grocery store or any like cheese store and ask for a fondue mix. Basically, it's just the cheese that they grate and you want to calculate about 200 grams for each person. It's not great, it's super fine, it's kind of chunky, and we're going to be using this cheese to make the fondue. And you want to use specific types of cheeses. Now, Swiss cheese comes in many, many varieties. There's no such thing as Swiss cheese. It doesn't exist. I'm going to list the different varieties right now. Some of the more popular blends are Gruyere, Appenzeller, Vachra, um, Emmentaler. If you live in North America or any other kind of place outside of Europe, it might be a little bit harder to find these cheeses, so make sure to head up to a really good uh, cheese specialty store. What you want to do is you want to take um, a clove of garlic and just cut it in half. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your fondue dish and you're going to rub the whole inside of that pot or the dish that you're using. So you just really want to rub that kind of garlic juice, <laughs> kind of the garlic slime all over the pot. And this is going to give a really, really good flavor to the cheese. Now we always just leave the little bits of garlic that are left over. I just leave it in there because I personally like the taste of garlic. Next you're going to need some dry white wine. I am using a Riesling. So if you're making fondue for two people, you want to have about 400 grams of cheese. And for 400 grams of cheese, you're going to need about 150 milliliters of white wine. So I'm going to measure that out. And now to this I'm going to add two uh, tablespoons of just regular cornstarch. Just two, sorry, not tablespoons, two teaspoons. And also to this, you're going to add a little bit of cherry schnapps. So the absolute traditional thing is the cherry one, um, but I personally like to add some pear schnapps. But like I said, the very traditional thing is cherry, but I personally think that pear goes really well with cheese and sometimes um, pears are served along with the fondue. And I'm going to just add uh, maybe two teaspoons. So you've got the cornstarch nice and dissolved with all the liquid so that there's no clumps in here as you can see. So next I'm going to make the bread cubes which you're going to need for um, dipping up the cheese in the cheese fondue. So what I like to get is a really nice kind of country bread and with a nice crust on it. Don't use like toast or stuff like that. You want something that's a little bit more of a solid type of bread. And what you're going to do is you're just going to cut bite sized cubes out of that. So you don't want to cut it too thin but not too big either because the problem is if you cut it too thin then sometimes the bread falls apart like that. So they should be about this big. So I've got my bread cubes ready. So now I'm going to heat up the liquid in the pot and this is just right on um, my element. So it doesn't have to be boiling, just a little bit hot. And now I'm going to add the entire cheese and then you want to put it on a medium heat and just let the cheese melt stirring occasionally so you don't want the cheese to you know, burn on the bottom or anything like that. 
and then just start stirring and mixing that up. Now the cheese is almost melted, or it's pretty much melted, so we can just kind of check the consistency. It should be, you know, runny, but not too runny. I'm just going to add a little bit more wine. It's a little bit too thick for me. Mix it well. Just at the very end, I'm going to add a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg, because that goes really well with the cheese. And then... I think we're ready now to eat. I have lit the fondue réchaud, as you can see. The flame is going. I like to serve it with some uh, pears. And I also really like cherry tomatoes um, for dipping. And to drink, I'm just serving white wine, the same white wine that I used in the fondue. And then to eat it, you just take your bread cube, pierce it onto the fork, and then you just swirl. And then it should look like that. Perfectly cheesy and gooey. It's pretty hot. Mmm. Mmm. So good. So I hope you guys try out this recipe. You can also um, get the full recipe with the instructions on my website, mischievous.tv, which I will link below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye.